Liv Tyler was a rising star in the middle of the 90s. After becoming a critical darling in some smaller films, she achieved commercial success by playing the lead role in a significant blockbuster. By 1998, she appeared to have Hollywood all to herself. Since then, Tyler has regularly worked and appeared in many movies with decently high visibility. Starring parts are, however, not very common. She never achieved the illicit career that seemed to be waiting for her. What happened then? Tyler's parents were Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler and the infamous rock group E.B.B. Buell. But Tyler didn't know that until she was 11 years old. In 1991, at 14 Tyler changed her name from Rudran to Tyler after her biological father. She kept Rudran as a middle name. This coincided with the beginning of Tyler's modeling career. The following year, Tyler graced the cover of Seventeen magazine. She was actually 15 at the time. Tyler said that being thrust into the spotlight was second nature to her modeling and decided to pursue acting. She gained notoriety in 1994 with Alicia Silverstone and the crazy music video by Aerosmith. In 1994, Tyler made her big screen debut in Silent Falls Thriller. The movie was panned by critics and flopped at the box office. Does it matter? Not really. At age 17, Tyler was a celebrity without even trying. In 1995, Tyler appeared in James Mangold's directorial debut, Heavy. Mangold composed the screenplay while going to filmmaking courses at Columbia College. He knew Tyler socially and knew that she was hoping to get into acting. After a video tryout, he cast Tyler as the youthful server. Tyler assisted Mangold with landing Debbie Harry for a supporting job through her associations with the music business. Heavy debuted at the Sundance Film Celebration where it won the Extraordinary Jury Prize. The next year, as Tyler's star was on the ascent, Heavy received a limited release in the United States. Tyler starred in Empire Records in 1995. Empire Records underwent extensive post-production editing. The film was trimmed by 40 minutes, and three characters were completely removed. The movie was initially set over the course of two days, but it was condensed to take place in just one day. Empire Records received generally unfavorable reviews after its debut and performed horribly at the box office. On video though, it has grown a cult following. In 1996, Tyler landed her first leading role in Bernardo Bertolucci coming-of-age drama, Stealing Beauty. The cast also included Rachel Weisz, Jeremy Irons, and Joseph Fiennes. The movie was shown at Cannes before opening theatrically in the United States. Reviews were mixed, but critics were universal in praising Tyler's performance. The positive buzz is what inspired the release of Heavy in the United States. Later that year, Tyler had a supporting role in Tom Hanks' directorial debut, That Thing You Do. Jonathan Skage, Steve Zahn, and Ethan Embry rounded out the band. Charlie is there and played Scott's girlfriend. Hanks cast himself as the band's manager. Hanks almost passed on casting Scott in the lead because the actor looked similar to Hanks when he was younger. But Hanks' wife, Rita Wilson, convinced him to cast Scott anyway. Despite positive reviews, That Thing You Do was a box office disappointment. It opened in third place behind The Glimmer Men, barely beating out Mighty Ducks 3. With a budget of $26 million, the film grossed only $34 million. In 1997 Tyler starred in two films, Inventing the Abbots and U-Turn. Both films failed at the box office. Inventing Abbots received negative reviews, finished 10th at the box office, and grossed less than $6 million. In U-Turn, Tyler's role is small. She played Girl in Bus Station. Reviews were mixed and the movie with a budget of $19 million could only gross $6.6 .6 In 1998, Tyler appeared in the Michael Bay-directed asteroid flick, Armageddon. As all drillers who turn out to be humanity's only hope, when an asteroid is hurtling for the Earth, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck starred in the film. Because it appears that training astronauts to utilize oil drilling equipment is more complicated than training oil drillers to become astronauts. Affleck allegedly asked the filmmaker this question, and Bay reportedly urged him to shut up. Tyler played a flex girlfriend who also happens to be Willis' daughter. Deep Impact, a disaster movie with a similar concept, competed with Armageddon. Deep Impact screenwriter Bruce Joel Rubin allegedly had lunch with a Disney production president to discuss his script. The Disney associate, according to Rubin, created Armageddon as a counterproduction after taking careful notes. The movie had to be produced rapidly as a result. In a later remark, they clarified that while he was proud of the film, he wished he had more time to edit the final act. 
Despite receiving mediocre to unfavorable reviews, Armageddon was a major box office success. Over 200 million was made in the United States, while over 550 million was made globally. Tyler's dad's band, Aerosmith, had a hit single on the movie's soundtrack. I Don't Want to Miss a Thing became the band's biggest hit. Armageddon was nominated for four Academy Awards in the technical categories. It was also nominated for seven Golden Raspberry Awards. Tyler was nominated for Worst Actress and as one half of the Worst Couple along with Affleck. And only Willis won for Worst Actor. It was Tyler's first major success. And it seemed that now her career would only go up, and she would only star in big projects after Armageddon. In 1999, Tyler co-starred opposite Robert Carlyle and Johnny Lee Miller in the British historical action comedy Plunkett and MacLean. The movie was panned by critics and bombed at the box office. The other two films were also unsuccessful. Cookies, Fortune, and Wungan. Wungan, with a budget of $14 million, managed to collect only $200,000 in theaters. In 2000, Tyler appeared in another Robert Altman film, Dr. T and Women, with Richard Geary in the title role. But even having such a star didn't help. Reviews were mixed, and the film took seventh place at the box office. The film grossed about $13 million in the United States a little more than half of its production costs. All of the actress films failed, and most likely her career could have ended in the early OOs. But the most powerful impetus to her career was her participation in Peter Jackson's adaptation. The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Odds are you're familiar with The Lord of the Rings movies. Jackson tried for years to get the movies made before New Line finally agreed. Jackson originally wanted Amma Thurman for the role of Arwen. But Thurman was pregnant and unavailable, so Tyler was cast instead. Prior to joining the cast, Tyler had never read the books. She quickly threw herself into learning talking lore and how to speak Elvish. Reviews were positive and the movie was nominated for 13 Academy Awards and won four. It was a bigger hit at the box office than anyone anticipated. It opened at number one and ended up being the second highest grossing movie of 2001 behind Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. In 2002, Tyler returned to Middle Earth for The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. After the success of the first movie, the special effects budget was doubled to accommodate the big battle scenes. The original treatment for The Lord of the Rings told the story across two movies. As such, there was a great deal of compression. In the original treatment, Tyler's character was included among the elves at the Battle of Helm's Deep. Tyler trained in swordplay for this battle scene, but this was a departure from the books. Tyler's character did not even appear in the middle book much less in the climactic battle scene. When word of this change was leaked, Tolkien fans went nuts online. The writers decided to remove Arwen from the Battle of Helm's Deep. Instead, Arwen was featured in flashbacks. All three films in the Lord of the Rings trilogy received positive reviews. It opened at number one at the box office and grossed over $900 million worldwide. In 2003, the Lord of the Rings trilogy was completed with the return of the king. As filming for the final film completed, Jackson gave each cast member a prop on their final day on the set. The gift was usually a prop of some significance to the character they played. Reviews for Return of the King were very positive although some critics dinged it for the multiple endings. It won 11 Oscars including Best Picture and Best Director. And it was the highest grossing movie in the series with over a billion dollars worldwide. However, it probably didn't do a lot to help Tyler's career. The lion's share of the accolades went to Jackson. For her part, Tyler went three straight years without a leading role. In 2004, Tyler reunited with her Armageddon co-star, Ben Affleck in Kevin Smith's comedy, Jersey Girl. It may be hard to remember this now that Affleck is an Oscar-winning director and a big-screen superhero, but there was a time when audiences were sick to death of looking at his smug face. That came to a head around this time. Jersey Girl was supposed to be a big movie for Smith. Reviews were mixed. Audience who were largely sick of Affleck refused to show up and the movie disappointed at the box office. It opened in fifth place and ended up grossing $25 million in the United States. Including international grosses, it still fell short of its $36 million budget. In 1998, Tyler began dating British musician Royston Langdon of the band Spacehog. The couple got engaged in February 2001 and married in March 2003. In December of 2004, Tyler gave birth to her first son. Tyler started working less to take on family obligations, and overall, Tyler's career began to fade. 
After The Lord of the Ring, it seemed that she would become a category a star. But after the trilogy, she only starred in one box office success in almost 20 years. The unexpectedly successful film was directed by a known director Brian Bertino. The Strangers was marketed as being based on a true story. That claim is true in the sense that there really are home invaders. Director Brian Bertino claimed he was inspired by some local crimes from his childhood as well as the Manson murders. Even so, based on a true story, seems like a bit of a stretch. The movie was originally planned for release in the summer of 2007. It was then pushed back until the fall of that year. Finally, it got pushed back again to May 2008. It was finally released to negative reviews. But it was a hit at the box office. Although it only opened in third place, it went on to gross more than $82 million at the box office. Considering the movie cost less than $10 million to make that was a terrific take. All further works, such as Rain Over Me, The Incredible Hulk, The Ledge, and Robot and Frank, failed at the box office regardless of the audience and critics' reviews. Tyler's last work was the failed at Astro, where she starred in a cameo role. Liv has worked steadily despite raising children. She's not the most prolific actress in the world. And yet, I keep being asked what the hell happened to her. Why is that? First, many people had higher expectations for her mainstream movie career. After being an it girl through the 90s, Tyler seemed poised for superstardom after Armageddon. When people ask what happened to her, I think they ask why she didn't become an A-list star. It certainly seemed well within her reach. So why wasn't Tyler a bigger movie star? Maybe that was ever her goal. Tyler has been surrounded by fame her entire life. Money is not an issue. Why should she strive to be the biggest movie star when she can make little movies that interest her instead? If she had wanted to be an A-list star, she certainly would have made different choices as her follow-up to Armageddon. Even though her movie career isn't as big as it might have been, Tyler remains firmly in the spotlight.